Hey, hello and welcome to this new tutorial by Flowmotion. Today I'm going to show you the very basics of matte paintings in After Effects. So I'm really trying to make this as simple as possible so that every one of you can recreate this. Because for that you don't need any green screen and you can simply film it with your smartphone. So let's get to it. So in here let's start this from scratch. But before we even do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a behind the scenes story of this shot, which I bet will be super useful for all of you. Because I chose this shot specifically for the matte painting tutorial. Hey, and for all of you who don't know what a matte painting is, a matte painting is simply a painted representation of a landscape, a set or a distant location that allows filmmakers to create the illusion of an environment that is not present at the filming location. For example, I filmed my shot in Germany and made it look like I was filming in New York. But you can also think of shots like being on a different planet or environments that simply do not exist. Let me bring out this commercial. Actually, it is a beer commercial from a German brand that I was supervising a few years back. So let me just scrub through this. Actually, it's the story of a child that grows up has a lot of experiences like in this disco scene here then he goes to visit the Statue of Liberty until he finally has so many experience that he finally can get the beer and I won't tell you the brand here but let's concentrate on that shot because I was supervising that shot on set as well as in post-production and we actually shot this one in Bucharest I think and also what's really funny is that we shot this shot and like three meters away, we actually built that disco. So if you would look on that direction, like two meters, there's actually the blue screen for the New York scene. So let's have a look on how I did that and how that influenced me on doing the matte painting shot that we are going to create today. So this is the final image that made it into the commercial. And we had this shot to start with. This is actually what we have shot on set. It's just a person standing in front of a blue screen and there's a wind machine going on. So all we needed now was the shot of New York, but actually we couldn't go there because that was just too expensive. So what we did to create that shot is actually we took a picture of the Statue of Liberty and the background is actually just referenced from Google Maps. So what we did here is just created shapes in the color of the buildings of all the skyscrapers as well as the bridge and so on. And then we just sat down, created layers and then just masked out all the windows and added a glow to all of that to give it some depth and that morning feel that there are already some people working inside those buildings. We actually did the same for the light on the Statue of Liberty. This is just a solid that is feathered so to create the illusion of light. And also what we have done back then when I scrubbed through this you can see that there are actually cars driving on the Brooklyn Bridge. This is something that just sells the shot. And for that shot, I've simply created like two pixels of a white solid, added a glow to it and then just manually keyframed it. It's something that you don't really notice, but you feel that there's something happening. And therefore the shot doesn't look like a still image. Of course, also the smoke that we added on top helps a lot. But the big challenge then was to create the water because there was no time and money for a water simulation. What we did back then was simply filming a river here in Germany and many of you will recognize this. This is the dome in Cologne and this was actually me filming it with a smartphone. So we shot this in 4k resolution, masked out the river, added the Statue of Liberty on top, painted all the background added in a sky and honestly the blue screen that was the easiest part because the blue is so super even you just have a little bit of shadowing going on on the floor and that's it. Even this little bird that is flying here is just from the Cologne footage. So I just used a luma mat to key out the bird and this is actually a bird flying in Cologne over the river Rhine. And while I was watching this shot a few days back I thought maybe we could have done this a little bit more easy. So how can we achieve that look with no green screen at all and just filming it with our smartphone? So in here we are going to recreate this matte painting shot that I have done. So now with all that in mind, let's get this thing going. Let me just grab the river footage that I've shot. 
And when I scrub through this, this is me standing in front of the river and I just made sure that I'm always covered with water. So my head doesn't go above that line because then I would need to add a green screen there or roto out my head. And by the way, if you want to learn more about rotoscoping or masking in After Effects, I made a quick video about everything you will ever need to know about masks in After Effects in just five minutes. Just click on the link right here. So, and remember what I told you before, if we just bring in a still image in here, this could simply look a little bit dead. So this is why I planned this shooting and went out on a sunny Sunday, because then I would have a lot of people on the other side with their bicycles and walking. And this is one of the big things that I used for my composition later on. Okay, so let's get this thing done. I just hit enter on the layer and call this the footage. Then I duplicate it and call this the people. And I just duplicate it once again and call it water. And I don't need sound for now. At first I'm creating a rough mask around the water and I'm actually going to also use this part here. For this kind of shot, you have to make sure that your camera, or in this case, my smartphone, is on a tripod. What I always do for my compositions is to define the horizon. In those two shots, it's pretty easy to define, because in this shot, the horizon is, and I hit Control R to get some rulers, the horizon is roughly about here. But let me tell you something, there are shots where you can't see the horizon that obviously. For example, if you're inside a room, then what you would have to do is to follow the vanishing lines of everything. For example, you have a table or something in there, then just follow the vanishing lines and where they are crossing each other, you have your horizon. And you can do that with all lines in your shot and they should all match up in the same position. And this is super important because if you're combining two shots or even more, you really have to make sure that the horizon is on the exact same position for each of the shots because you can't trick your eyes. Now I'm going to bring out my shot of New York. This one I didn't shoot with my smartphone, but with my camera and therefore I used my Canon EOS R. But you could easily do that with your smartphone. So now let's align the horizon. Just shrink this a little bit, also rotate it. And by hitting R, you get the rotation values. Now you see we are already getting somewhere and let's directly create a null object. And I'm parenting both of them to the null object with this icon here, this pick whip. Just drag it onto the null and let go. Now when I'm moving the null object, you can see everything follows. So you can just see the statue and all of this a little better. And we can get rid of the horizon here. Okay, and now we have like two problems. At first, you can definitely see that this is a still image and the water isn't moving. So this is what I told you. I have created some people. So here you can get creative. What I'm doing here is I'm rotoing out this part here with all the people moving, maybe until here. And now I just define a nice looking area. And you can go way more into detail here, but I'm just roughly cutting out a nice line here where I have some people in the shot that are actually moving. You could maybe also do that with a luma key or the extract effect to get rid of all the darker parts. This is totally up to you and how much time you want to invest. Okay, there we have our people and I'll just bring them into position. I'll just hide the mask. You can do that when you click on here. And also I'm going to shrink this so that the people have about the same size as on the statue here. And let's feather this a little bit by hitting F and then you get some feathering properties. And let's have a look on what we have created so far. You can see that this part already looks convincing. So next what we have to do is to create some water for that top part here. And you guessed it, I'm again simply using a patch of this. So I'm hiding this and now I'm defining the area where I need my water. Okay, in here we need some water so I can turn it back on. And by hitting the Y key, you can click on it and you can reposition everything. What I would recommend you when you do shots like that, simply have your camera rolling for a little bit longer so you have a clean plate of the moving water. And I would just bring the water beneath the people. You can still see the line here and therefore we are going to feather the mask. But we only wanna feather it here and not on top or maybe not that much on top 
because then we would blur it into New York. And to do that, we hit G once again. So when we hit it once, we have the pen tool. And if we hit it once again, we get the feather tool. And now I just click here and here and I can feather this part. And now you can define how much feathering you want to have for your shot. This is it for this shot. So now you can animate the scaling and position. So hit S and P for scale and position for that shot. Hit U to reveal all your keyframes. Maybe we want to end here after a few seconds. But of course, before we scale, we need to also parent the people and the water to the null object. So now when we scale this up, you see that everything is scaling with it. So we could maybe start over here on the Statue of Liberty to see the people moving and then zoom out and now as you know the trick you can do as many different things that you want to add to it you can animate the clouds roto out the skyscrapers and add in a different sky and if i am in the frame i can quickly show you where you need to take a look at because the closer something is to the camera the darker the black values are so this should be the darkest black this should be brighter and in the background it should be super bright and you can do that by simply going to that exposure slider and this just brings up the exposure or brings it down but doesn't change it actually it's just for your viewing purpose so when i bring this up you see that the background starts to be overexposed at first you can still see all the blacks in the midground and when they are all gone, you still have the foreground. So this is really something to watch out for if you're composing something in the depth. The closer something is, the darker the blacks are. And by the way, if you click on that icon, you're back to normal. But before we end this tutorial, let me show you another shot where you could achieve the same thing. Because I thought, why not give it a try with a different shot? And I went into the park here and thought, okay, maybe we could make this look like the Central Park. And same thing here, I'm just not going to mask it here. Let's add the key light effect and simply key out the sky. And you see, it has a little bit of artifacts in here. And this is because, as I told you, everything's filmed with a smartphone. And now I have another pic of New York. And again, let's work on those black levels. So they are too dark here. And you can do that with the levels effect. Just bring it on the New York picture. And at the moment, your darkest point is set to black. So the image goes from white to complete black. And there's almost everywhere information. So you can now simply drag that slider in because this slider defines your darkest black level. I'll show you that. And you should see that the skyline of New York gets more and more washed out because it has less black. You see? So now that's obviously too much. That would be like very much in the distance. But as I told you, I'm always double checking it with the exposure. So now we still have a little bit of blacks going on here. And when they are disappeared, the trees start. And obviously I am the last one here. And again, I chose this shot because the mountain is always covering me. And otherwise I would have to roto this out. While I'm watching this, maybe the background could be a little bit sharper. And maybe there could also be a little bit more highlights. And you get that by sliding in all the bright values. So everything that is here now gets completely white because this skyscraper here is actually from the original. And obviously you could work a little bit more on the key, maybe just quickly shrink it and also make it a little softer. Maybe that's just too much, but one. And now let's sharpen the background a bit more. And there we have our final shot. And what really helps selling the shot is all the trees that are interacting with foreground and background. So really look out for stuff like that. So if you like what you've seen so far, then just give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hey, and leave me a comment because I'm always trying to answer all of your comments and it's really fun to do that. And I really hope that you learned something about matte paintings today, how to use them, when to use them, and how to use them in a clever way. And hey, you can always go advanced and simply add in a green screen and go completely crazy. So for now, I wish you a lot of fun experimenting with matte paintings.